sort of Nottingham to get the shots in. There's Brent Pope. Uh, he's played the previous three seasons at Cardiff, scoring 10 goals and sitting out at 417 minutes in penalties. We know why he's there, don't we? That's, uh, that's a lot of time. Ashley Tate winning the draw. It's Brent Bobbick working on the boards. Nottingham. Both teams are back to full strength. Here come London, not offside. Now, shot, he scores! Rob Penny stepping in, great pass. And we got a 4-2 game now. That was a goal and a half. Ian Cooper just stepping right out of the box, intercepting the pass and making it really work from there. But unbelievable, as you can see here, Cooper steps out, throws the puck across. And uh, Kenny just goes straight for the net. Willis commits himself. Kenny throws it up above him. Look at that. Jeff Hode with a wonderful pass. Beautiful goal. To the leading goal scorer of the London Knights. The captain of the London Knights doing a captain's job, giving them a two-goal cushion now over the Nottingham Panthers. London will be happy with that. Getting a two-goal cushion now. Coming out to the eight-minute mark. Great open ice hit now by Bowen. And we got it. We got it going now, folks. A great open ice hit has caused both teams to start mixing it up as they start protecting one another. I don't think, I mean, it was a good hit. That was a good solid hit. Now, but not much else is happening. They're just holding on to each other. Obviously, Kenny and Ho took offense to the hit. Neil Martin there laying down on the ice after the big hit. Oh. Oh. Got caught with his head down. <laughs> well, helmet comes off, and he got clipped again by, in the head with the stick. So he took a good solid crunch, which probably caught him in the midriff, lost his win, and then all of a sudden he getting hit by his own player as well, which... Uh... Jeff Hode won't be... Uh upset it accidentally uh, clipping clipping his own player after Neil Martin got leveled there by a Nottingham Panther in the neutral zone and ice hockey is a contact sport folks and if you uh, strap on the skates and put on the jersey you got to expect to get leveled like that you got to keep your head up well as, as you say Nick I mean it's something that um, you know you will see this here again I think that hit coming from Kane and then the elbow, the elbow hold sort of cut brushes his, you know, side of his head. Yeah. But he, he's moving. I think, you know, he's just sort of a bit dazed at the moment. And uh, as Neil Martin uh, is still laying down on the ice, we've got a few penalty calls coming up. Brent Pope is sitting in the box for the Nottingham Panthers. He's going to get a two-minute unsportsmanlike misconduct and in the London Knights box Jeff Hode will be serving the identical identical penalty two minute unsportsmanlike misconduct obviously uh, things flaring up a little bit Gary words flying around Andy Carson catching wind of it not liking it and there's the stretcher coming on to the ice to take Neil Martin the injured London Knight we think he's winded but he also took a, an elbow or a stick uh, to the head, and they're going to just be taking uh, precautionary measures. Now oh. we've got things kicking off a little bit uh, in the neutral zone. Mike Ware looking for somebody to, to poke, and here we go. Mike Ware pushing everyone away. Mike Ware really wants to get at somebody, and this is just brutal. Someone's got to get a hold of this guy because it's obviously unnecessary right now. Mike Ware just looking for somebody in a black jersey. Finds Bowen, who made the hit. And Gary, as you said, it was a clean hit. Mike Ware just wasting time right now. I didn't think there was a lot in it. Obviously, they saw something that uh, we didn't. But, um, you know, Mike Ware is that sort of uh, customer who will challenge anybody if he felt that uh, their team's been run down wrong. But I think that'll be the last of uh, you see of Mike Ware in this game. Mike Ware wanting to make a statement for the London Knights saying... We're going to watch out for our players. Ware is looking hard for Bowen. Gets a hold of him. Looks like he cracked him once on the helmet. 
and then it was just a wrestling match. It, uh, never, never hurts when you get hit on the head with a helmet on, that's for sure. No. Hurts the other guy's hand. There goes where he gets ejected from the game. the third time that Mike Ware has been ejected from a game this season and uh, you know we know that uh, there's the injured player Neil Martin we know now for the London Knights they're going to be without Martin they're going to be without Ware that's uh, that's obviously going to cut their bench strength down and with just a little over eight minutes to go in the game two guys down could be a, a factor Mike Ware gets a five-minute roughing penalty, and of course that is the rest of the game as well as a major penalty. Neil Martin, they're taking off. They're just worried about his neck. There you can see he's got the uh, the neck brace on. They're going to be taking precautions because no one is going to... Uh, everyone worries about neck injuries. Team's going for the final change of the, of the game. And here comes Rushforth on his off wing. Shot, save. Great shot by Rushford. I mean, again, oh, here we go. We've got another sort of altercation down in the Nottingham uh, goal mode. Bowen, Bowen getting picked on again, I guess, from that hit earlier on. Can't see who's in there from London. No, I feel that the London boys are still taking offense to that hit from earlier on, but uh, it looks like it's uh, Scott Campbell. Scott Campbell's come in there. Like you said, taking offense from that uh, open ice hit. And uh, now we can actually head down to uh, Shannon Hope, ringside. Yeah, some news down from the medical room here. Neil Martin, uh, who took that hit from Bowden earlier, earlier on and went off from the stretcher, apparently he was never unconscious. He actually twigged a muscle in his shoulder when he hit the ice and would send some signals down his arm and he couldn't feel his fingers in one hand. He's actually been resting here for a few minutes. He's gone to the hospital. He actually can feel his hand now. They, they don't think it's as serious as it looked, and uh, we wish me all the best. Thanks a lot, Shannon, for that good news. Uh, taking a two-minute minor for roughing, and as you said, the London Knights just sending a message to Bowen and the Nottingham Panthers. We got to protect our players. Absolutely. You know, you make a statement. You definitely don't want people running over you, and uh, you know that's what London's done. They've sort of tried to stamp their authority and say, "Hey, this isn't going to happen again." And we got another fight now going down in the corner. Here we go. Fist up lion. I think it's Mark Hussey for London. Hussey and Kane and Hussey. Hussey Kane and Kane. <laughs> no pun intended. Getting uh, getting a shed load of punches in there. Kane not really being able to get a hold of his feet. Two pretty tough guys, but that one going Kane's way. Well, Hussey, I mean, he's a big boy standing at six foot four, and, you know, he's not going to take much out there. Kane, again, another big competitor at six foot three, and those guys weigh some pounds, so there's some two heavyweights going at it. But I didn't see how that all started. I think that was just something off the puck that they both took offense to and decided, hey. As I said, uh, Hussey definitely getting in more punches there. Hussey getting a two plus two minor, minor penalties. So he's got four minutes to serve and Kane, identical penalties, two plus twos each end. Some good punches going either way both there, sides, actually. Both sides, I think that was a draw, but uh, you know, like I say, you get sort of two big heavyweights like that. Final period. See what happens at the final whistle, see if anything else does mix up. Brent Bobick now with a break on his wing. Stops, delays, tries to find someone, doesn't. And that is it. The London Knights have finally beaten the Nottingham Panthers here in the Seconda Super League in a very physical game, Gary, and a very exciting game. There's no doubt about it. They, they changed that record from 0-7-1 to 1-7-1 now. So that'll be a sort of weight off their shoulder. And there you have it, the London Knights collecting their first two points in the Seconda Super League with a 5-3 win over Nottingham. Now, here are the highlights. Carlson starting the scoring from Nottingham on the power play. Culleton making it 1-1. Flickle then making it 2-1 for the Panthers. Scremen leveling the scores at two apiece. Scremen giving, making it 3-2 for London. 
Rob Kenny giving the London Knights a 4-2 lead. Jamie Leach on the five-minute power play, making it 4-3. And then Wetzel closing the scoring for the London Knights. Final score, 5-3. And now we can join head coach of the London Knights, Chris McSorley. He's talking to Shannon Hope. Your Welcome back. The London Knights beating the Nottingham Panthers here at the London Arena for their first win in the Sakana Super League. Rob Kinney with a game-winning goal. Well, it was an action-packed game here at the London Arena. Now it's time to check out the rest of the action from the Sakana Super League in Rink Roundup. The Cardiff Devils are packed full of new faces this season, but on Saturday, Daniel Jardimeyer's first goal for his new club rekindled memories of the Devils' famous playoff win against Manchester last April. But then the Storm remember that they're the champions and up their game accordingly. Greg Gatto on the power play, 8.31 into the game. Then a wonderful short-handed effort by Rick Brabant gave the Storm a first period advantage. And the gap became 3-1, 3-22 into the second. Defensive slackness by the Devils, punished by Jeff Jablonski. Vecchio Sacratini deflected home the Devils' second power play goal of the night, 53 seconds before the end of the period. And when Steve Morrier scored a beauty midway through the third for his 50th ISL goal, it was a feeling the Devils' new boys might claim a prize scalp. It wasn't to be. Two goals in 2 minutes 23 for David Livingston, and this effort by Darren Hurley gave Manchester breathing space. They needed it. Patrick Lungback's first Cardiff goal, 30 seconds from the end, caused a few anxious moments. But Manchester held on to remain unbeaten. Cardiff still chasing their first win. Nottingham Panthers got a jump on air at the Ice Stadium with a two-goal first period. Brent Bobbick set up Marty Flitchell for a debut goal. Before an inspired touch of improvisation brought the ever-alert Greg Haddon a second. And when Jamie Leach sneaked a third under the pads of Grand Sergeant, 2.27 into the second, the 2,222 crowd sat back to enjoy the show. Unfortunately, so did the team. Air gave a warning of what was to come, firing 24 second period shots on Jordan Willis. But it was in the third that they made the shots pay. John Varga finally beating Willis, and how. Now then, new uniform, but familiar style, and finish. Tony Han cutting the gap to one. Vince Bowe completed the comeback, 4.56 from the end, no goals in overtime, points shared. On Sunday, it was deja vu, almost the Eagles, coming back from an early goal. This one for Steelers' Dale Junkin was his 75th in the Super League. But no sharing the sentiment by air. Despite icing just 15 skaters, they achieved parity through Sean Byram midway through the first. And leading by example, the captain made it 2-1 early in the second. Air's ability to battle for the puck contributed to their third for Jamie Steer, 6.32 into the period. John Varga and Scott Young's dirty work providing dividends. It's Steer's 100th ISL game for the Eagles. But when playing Sheffield, beware Ed Courtney. The cutest of tip-ins leaves Sargent on his backside and Sheffield right back in the contest. But then it all went horribly wrong for the Steelers. Yves Haru fired a weak goal under Grant Shervan. Courtney then received a 10-minute misconduct penalty. And Air secured their first win of the season on Varga's empty net goal, 17 seconds from time. Good weekend for the Eagles, three points out of four. Bracknell have been the surprise team of the season so far. Two wins out of two going into the game with Cardiff. The way they started against the tired-looking Devils suggested a comfortable night. 21st period shots for the Bees, rewarded with three goals. Todd Kelman on 3.59 and Todd Goodwin on Steve Lyle's glove side, 2.01 later. Cardiff back in the contest at 12.14. Doc Durdle skating into the slot to finish. 
but the two goal advantage restored by Bracknell just 26 seconds later. Courtesy, Blake Knox. It's a pretty way to reach 100 Super League points. If Cardiff hadn't sneaked a second when Frank Evans made a rare foray up the ice, it's doubtful they could have raised their game. But they did, and a much more disciplined Devils took the second period 1-0. It's Steve Thornton's power play 32 seconds from the end of the period. But even now, Dave Whistle must wonder how his team failed to kill off the Devils. Bracknell re-established control through Dennis Chassé's well-guarded deflection on the power play. Only for Cardiff to hit back again. Vettio Sacratini from close in with just 3.07 on the clock. That takes him up to 200 ISL points. Into overtime, Devils took four penalties, including a five-plus game spearing call on the Swede Yardemeyer. Even so, Steve Thornton somehow smuggled the puck home for a short-handed sudden-death winner. The first win of the season for Cardiff snaps a seven-game winless streak. So then, confirmation of the weekend's results from the Seconda Super League. Wins on Saturday for Manchester and Sheffield, with Nottingham holding out for the point against there. On Sunday, Manchester maintained their 100% record with a 5-2 win over Newcastle at the MEN Arena. That sees the defending champions top of the Seconda Super League after three games. Bracknell's point against Cardiff on Sunday leaves them in second place. And the London Knights move off the bottom of the table after their first league win at home over Nottingham at on Sunday. Now then, an update for you on the condition of London Knights defenceman Neil Martin, who was stretched off after a brutal collision on Sunday's game against Nottingham. After a full hospital checkup, doctors diagnosed acute whiplash. Painful, but good news for Martin, who's expected to be back training with the Knights later this week. The Greg Haddon, top goal scorer in the Super League last season including a record five in one game. Pretty impressive numbers, especially in this tight league, Gary. Well, again, he's been a proven goal scorer. He works hard. He's a, he's a good general on the ice. He can move the puck. He's got good hands and got good vision, and that's what you need in a goal scorer. Karlowski stopping the puck behind his net, but Nottingham getting on the end of it. Cardiff off the boards, not getting out. Pope sends it in. Karlowski with the save. Gardin tries to find out front. Save. Again out front, and Nicky Chin picks it off. Tries to find his winger, doesn't. Ashley Tate gets nailed in the neutral zone, and Graham Gardin just sends it into Cardiff's zone. We got a penalty, penalty, big fight. Here we go. Two big heavyweights going at it, not getting many punches land. They hit the knees, and the linesmen jump in, Gary. Yeah, you got it there. You, you, you know, this is going to be a fiery game, and I think both teams are really up for it. And uh, you saw Kane, and uh, I think it was, I think part of players sort of took offense at Mickey Chin. And uh, they're two big boys. They can throw them, and they're not going to sort of let anybody get the better of them. Nicky Chin was saying before the game that uh, he's having a hard time getting rolling right now, and uh, maybe this will wake him up. Well, maybe it will. I mean, he, you know, he had such a great season at the end of last year. He's a, he's a super player. He's one of the top British talents in this country, and uh, he's a strong competitor, and he, he'll, you know, he knows what to do to raise his game. So Aaron Kane's going to get a two-minute minor for roughing, and uh, Nicky Chin will get the identical penalty. They're going to get two plus twos, I guess, for, uh, for roughing. Nicky Chin getting out of the way of the camera. He's a bit camera shy as well. So go. Newcastle River Kings started a home-and-home -home weekend taking on Cardiff on Saturday. Just 2.07 in, though, they're a goal down. The Evergreen, Steve Moria on target. And even when the River Kings took advantage of power play opportunities to first equalise through Derby Walker midway through the first. And then take the lead through Yuhal Lampen and 6.57 into the second. There was always the feeling that Cardiff were capable of recording their fifth straight win over Newcastle. In a defence-dominated contest, Murray's ability to find space was crucial. He assisted on Daniel Jardimai's equaliser 29 seconds later, and then grabbed his second 403 from the end of the period with what turned out to be the game winner. He made his debut in 1986 in Britain, at Ginseng is working wonders. Sheffield Steelers seem to have put all last year's off-ice problems behind them. Don McKee's team looked focused in the moment Tita Wynn tucked home a rebound, 2.49 into the game against Air. Looking sharp around the net, Derek Laxdell scored his first league goal since January to make it two before the first interval. Then Ed Courtney took control. 
with Air Force to press forward, gaps appeared at the back. Mr. Courtney doesn't need too many invitations to tickle the twine. Steelers third came midway through the second. His second followed 4.42 into the third. New boys, McCosh and Noble with the assists. Happy times in the house of steel. Grant Shervin's shutout was ruined by John Barger's short-handed effort, 5.37 from time. But the Steelers, three out of three at home. And on Sunday, Sheffield picked up where they left off. Another early goal, this time for Dale Junkin, set them on their way at Newcastle. And by 12.15, it was 2-0. Good work by Mark Mathieu and Dave Longstaff setting up Jason Weaver. Steelers cruising. The River Kings are struggling at the moment, but staring a fourth straight loss in the face, Dobby Walker's second goal of the weekend gave them hope. But once again, Newcastle lacked the killer instinct. Junkin poached his second of the night, 7.25 into the third. A weekend of contrast for Newcastle and Sheffield. 